Hey guys, uh, this is my three minute hit for today. Uh, Chris Perry from Equity Guru here. Sometimes I like to do a quick mini rant on companies. Sometimes they're companies that are clients. Sometimes they're companies that once were our clients way back in the day. Uh, and I'm gonna give a bit of a nod to Avant Brands, used to be G-Tech Holdings. Uh, Avant is A-V-N-T as a ticker symbol. Why am I talking about them today? Well, I'm talking about them despite a few things. One, I'm talking about them despite the fact that they're a Canadian cannabis company. And we know how I feel about those these days. They're generally dog shit. Uh, I just did a big rant on uh, Can Canopy Growth Corp, uh, which I effectively, I think, buried them. Um, it, it, it's uh, gone down something like 95% this year. And I don't think it's got anything left in it to keep it up from there. But there are some diamonds in the rough out there in the canopy lands, in the, sorry, canopy, the cannabis landscape. And one of them, I think, is a van brands. Now, I say this not as a, a, any sort of client relationship. We haven't uh, taken money from a, from a van slash GTEC since woo, way back in the day when we were actually positive on cannabis companies to an extent. But I'll tell you one thing. Of all the, canopy, of, of the cannabis executives that are out there that were there in 2017, 2018, very few, put them on one hand, are still there right now. And in order to still be there right now, you need to have weathered the storm, turn things around to the point where investors are okay with you, turn things around to the point where you could see some sort of growth potential, kept your costs down, stayed away from debt, and managed to push things forward, regardless of the fact that it's almost impossible to raise money in cannabis in Canada. So how many of those are out there? The only one I can think of is Norton Singhaven and Avant Brands. Now, they've gone through a rebranding. They've gone through some name changes on some of their products. They've bought stuff. They've sold stuff. But here's the thing. In a year-over-year -year basis, this company's gone from $8.2 million revenue in, in uh, Q3 year-to-date of 2021 to $13.7 million in 2022. That's a big jump, 71%. And on top of that, a large portion of that is recreational revenue. It's not white labeling. It's not doing some business to business deals. It's serious market penetration for a small grower that is, you'd have to say, uh, a premium craft product. Now their product black market is legit. If you're a smoker and I am not, but if you're a smoker, uh, black market is one of the top, I would say three to five brands out there in terms of how people feel about it. Um, and that's no small feat when you've got 300 plus competitors in the Canadian landscape and you struggle to get your stuff seen on shelves because most dispensaries don't have shelves these days. Thank you, Canadian marketing rules. Okay, so it's one thing to have revenue. A lot of companies have revenue, but how do they keep it within costs? Well, 12.2 million year to date to Q3. Um, as we said, that's up 71%. And if we go down the road a little bit, what we find is that their operating expenses are 9.5 million. So 13.7 million revenue, 9.5 on the operating expenses. Now there are other things out there that you know cost you money, staying on the exchange being one of them. Um, but a net loss before income tax of $2 million for the year, not the quarter, but for the year. These guys are turning it around. Now that loss is an improvement of 41%. Uh, the adjusted EBITDA is 173,000. Last year at this time, the adjusted EBITDA was $53,000 loss. Again, you're up about 426% there. Kilograms sold, up 98%. Kilograms produced, up 69%. So they're selling more than they're actually producing. Right? They're not overproducing and having to kill off this is good stuff. So we get right down to it and uh, the, the price per gram they're getting is 564, which is more than a lot of people. And uh, although it's down 13%, but so is the market. So the numbers are adding up for a van. Now what is this really telling us? Well, we spoke to Norton about six months ago and not, again, not a client, just called him up and said, how's it going there? And he said, you know what? We're really close to being break even, really close. And in terms of adjusted EBITDA, uh, this last quarter versus Q2, 
uh, adjusted EBITDA increased by 1.2 million to 700,000, which means positive EBITDA, adjusted EBITDA, adjusted. And so weed companies do the adjusted thing, but hey, are they gonna run out of money is the big question with all weed companies. And the answer here, it doesn't look like they are. Revenues are growing, sales are growing. They're getting better at what they do. They're streamlining the operation. They've got some cash in the bank. They don't have any debt. They look like they're moving things in the absolute right direction. They've got medical uh, revenue. They've got recreational. They've got white label. Like this is a company that if one thing goes wrong on one corner, the other three corners can keep it standing. Uh, this is a CEO that's been doing it for long enough that you know, like, all right, so Seahaven worked in worked as a deal guy back in the day, right? Back Way back in the day. This was his deal that he put together. He called in favors. He called in contacts. He put this deal together from scratch, built it up to a thing that existed in the world and never got stupid with it. He never got greedy. He didn't go out there on a massive acquisition spree. He set up this company to do a thing and God damn it, he's done the thing. He's done the thing. In the Canadian <laughs> cannabis market, he's done the thing. Now, I can't point to any other people out there that were there at the beginning, rode through the rough stuff, and got their company built to a point where you can say, respect, brother, you are a going concern in a, in a sector full of non-going non-concerns. Nobody's putting the clock up on, on, on a van. Nobody's putting the, the countdown to say these guys, they're on borrowed time. Every other company's on the countdown, but Event Brands is not. And so when these finances went out, the stock went up. Stock went up nicely. In fact, uh, let me pull it up. It went up from 20 cents to uh, almost 30 in one fell swoop. Right now it's about 26. Um, so, you know, it's been a bit of a drop off, uh, but that sort of a spike over a two day period is a pretty good spike for a company that's been sort of running the rails pretty flat for most of 2022. Listen, I don't know if now's a good time to buy Avant brand stock or not. Uh, what I will say is this, Norton Seahaven has my respect. He has done what he said he was gonna do despite the, the problems with the market, despite COVID, despite a down economy, despite cannabis price compression, despite having more competitors out there than any other industry can rightly support. Norton Singhaven has built his brand through quality and through delivering on what he promised. Man, we've never gone out for a beer, me and Norton, and maybe we never will, but uh, I can say this as somebody who knew almost every CEO in the cannabis business on a first name basis for a lot of years. Dude did it. He did it, pulled it off. And I know he did it, not because it was the easiest thing, because Lord knows it would have been easy to just flip the company to somebody else and get back into the deal business, make a bit of money, have a nice cabin. Norton Singhaven had a bee in his bonnet, man. He wanted to make this thing work. And he has gone through the shit to make it happen. He's gone through personal abuse. He's gone through online trash. He's gone it and stuck it out and made it work. And if he gets the opportunity to wear this win everywhere he goes for the next 20 years, that will be justified. There are a lot of dickheads in the Canadian cannabis space. Norton Singhaven is one of the few that can hold their head up and say, I did a good thing. So AVNT, Avant Brands, take a good look at it. Not a client. I don't get anything out of you guys buying it or selling it or whatever. I'm just going to say this respect respect where it's owed every canadian cannabis company should look back at what avnt has done and copy and if you think that i'm right go ahead and subscribe so you can get more of these in your inbox